Hey guys, this is Rishabh from FDC Team 5773 in Metal, and today I'll be talking about three different types of navigation around the field in the first tech challenge, and those are encoders, odometers, and distance sensors. I'll talk about the functionality of each of these types of navigation, their pros and their cons, and also the situations in which they would be the most useful. So first, we have the encoder. So the encoder has five main parts. There's a circuit board, a disk with ticks on it, uh, which are those dark lines. There's a photo detector and a small light source, uh, which is just a small LED, as well as a wire, of course, to connect your encoder to the control hub. So this disk that you see with the ticks on it is attached to the shaft of the motor. And as that shaft rotates, the disk rotates as well. And each time a uh, tick passes over the light source, the light from the light source understandably dims a little bit. And the photo detector, which is situated right above the light source, detects that slight dimming and realizes that one tick has passed over the light source. So in your robot code, there's a constant that you can specify, which determines that once a certain number of ticks has passed over the light source, and that is once the shaft has rotated a certain amount, we've traveled forward, or we've traveled in any direction, one inch. So uh, in our in the encoders that we're using in our odometer module, which I'll get to in a, in a bit, uh, once we have covered 308 ticks, we know we have cut, traveled forward one inch. So here are some disadvantages and advantages to using the encoder. So as it is, encoders uh, are only used for accurate motion, uh, speed, and acceleration. And uh, without some extra code that you have to write, you can't determine your position on the field. However, there are many advantages. Uh, they come built into many motors, such as the commonly used Go Build a Yellow Jacket motors, and many VEX motors, such as the Falcon 500. And they can be used in applications other than driving your robot, robot around the field. So for example, this year, if your outtake contains a flywheel, you can, deter, you can control uh, the speed of your fly, flywheel very accurately using encoders. And that would be very important to teams which are varying the speed of their outtake flywheel in order to launch the ring different distances. Um, of course, uh, you have to control that flywheel speed very precisely in order to have a very precise control over your uh, ring's flying distance. On top of that, acceleration control using uh, the encoders after your motor has been tuned, uh, your motor's PID values have been tuned, that is, um, the acceleration control you have is much more consistent than if you were to simply rely on your control hub uh, varying power. So now we move to our second form of navigation, and that is the odometer. So the odometer has three parts, uh, the encoder which we just talked about, which in the previous situation was used in the context of motors, but you can also take that piece and put it in an odometer for a different purpose, but a very similar purpose. Then you have the casing, and you have the small omni wheel, which is placed in the center of that casing. So first, in order, to, uh, in order to execute the kind of navigation we have used and many other teams have used, you must use three odometers together and they must be placed on the belly of the robot in the fashion we have shown at the top right. So you have to use three modules, two would be placed on either side of the robot and they would be placed parallel to the forward axis. So that would be a forward direction and the odometer that's placed in the center of the robot would be placed or oriented perpendicular to that forward direction. So as the robot moves, uh, due to friction between uh, the omni wheel and the ground, the omni wheels turn. And because the different omni wheels will turn different amounts, uh, for example, when you're moving forward, the center odometer is oriented perpendicular to the forward direction, and will therefore, in an ideal situation, not turn at all, whereas the other two odometers are placed uh, parallel to that direction and would therefore move, uh, would turn the exact same amount. So using a combination of all three of those readings, 
we can determine uh, exactly how far we've moved forward and we can also easily achieve um, move uh, turns of, at uh, specified angles and using some code that's been written by another team called Acme Robotics um, we can determine precisely where on the field we are in addition uh, to having all this movement control. So the, the position we're currently at is returned as an ordered pair which would be um, you know a simple ordered pair that would be used on a, on a rectangular coordinate system um, and that is because the entire field when using odometers is converted into a coordinate system a rectangular coordinate system so your starting point on the field is your origin which has coordinates 0 comma 0 and any target position is specified by another coordinate um, so for example if I wanted to move 3 inches to the right and 5 inches forward I would move to the position 3 comma 5 and uh, just for clarity all units are in inches so here are the advantages and disadvantages of using an odometer so one thing is that the PID tuning uh, for the four motors we are using for our mechanism wheels uh, the PID tuning is very very time consuming and uh, it took our team around four days uh, since we were using it for the first time uh, and the, but that is uh, the one thing if you tune it once you don't have to tune it again but the initial tuning process takes a long time and also there are some very delicate parts that have to be handled carefully so for example um, that disc with the ticks on it that has to be handled very carefully and cannot have any scratches otherwise you'll get inconsistent readings and possibly even incorrect readings um, and that can really uh, ha take a toll on your navigation however there are many advantages so in a goal in a challenge like ultimate goal which is this year's challenge um, we have to move around on the field in very different directions and all over the field um, you know rings will be uh, will fall at very random spots on the field and um, we have to be able to travel all over and so since we're utilizing the entire field it's very useful to know precisely where we are in a challenge like last year's Skystone challenge, um, there's a very similar pattern of motion, uh, which kind of resembles an L. And so in that case, odometers might not be necessary because uh, there's not much variation in the kind of movement you're doing. In that case, uh, encoders would be sufficient. But here, since we're moving in all sorts of different directions and turning all different sorts of uh, amounts, odometers would be very useful to track where we are um, and as our team did, we can uh, autonomously uh, go back to the same shooting position because we know where we are on the field and we know uh, where we want to shoot from. So then that's a click of a button and we can return to our shooting position rather than having to manually align each time. So that's a very nice advantage of using um, odometers. Uh, furthermore, as I said before, uh, the Roadrunner uh, code, which has been written by Team Acme Robotics, gives us all the robot motion functions. So for example, strafing, splining, uh, forward and backward motion, all of these different types of motions, the, the code has been written for us. So we no longer have to, uh, have to worry about writing the code itself, and we can now focus on uh, executing our autonomous paths and our teleop um, without having to worry about you know, uh, the nitty gritty details of how the robot moves itself. So that, uh, we wanted to give a shout out to that team uh, because it really helped us and many other teams out. Uh, and for uh, last thing, many teams have released their odometry modules uh, for any team to use. And so the module I'm talking about is uh, that thing at the bottom right of this slide. And uh, you can see that we have 3D printed a case uh, to hold all of our uh, components. And uh, teams such as Primitive Data uh, and others have released that code or released uh, those CAD files for you to immediately print and um, you know be good to go so that's not something you have to take the extra time to do and you can get straight to navigating around your field so now I'll move to the final form of navigation I'll be talking about and that is the distance sensor so distance sensors can use either light or sound but they're used in the same way a beam of light or a wave of sound is emitted at an object and the module 
It measures how much time is taken for that wave of sound or that beam of light to uh, hit the object and return back. And so using the formula d equals rate times time over 2, we can determine uh, the distance to that object because we quite accurately know the speed of sound uh, as well as the speed of light. And uh, the time we're considering here is the distance taken for the light or sound to go to the object and come back. But we only need the part uh, where we're going to the object. So we would half the time. So using d equals rt over 2, we can determine the distance to the object. Um, and it's a very accurate form of distance measurement in situations where you wouldn't uh, know beforehand where different components would be lying on the field. Uh, so this is great for unpredictable situations and adaptability to wherever you are on the field, especially during autonomous situations. And uh, they would be used in conjunction with either odometers or encoders uh, to control your uh, robot movement motors. So here are the disadvantages and advantages of using a distance sensor. Uh, the disadvantages are that you can only use it when there are other reference ob objects or obstacles. Um, so for example, if you were on an empty field and had to rely entirely um, you know, on your, on your own um, navigation ability, then that would not be possible with the distance sensor. But uh, in most situations, you will have other reference objects. For example, the walls of the perimeter fields themselves are uh, reference obstacles. So you can determine where you are on the field uh, by using a couple distance sensors and uh, reflecting sound or light, depending on what, uh, what type of sensor you're using, off of those walls, and that will tell you where you are. Um, but the advantages are that there's no tuning time required, so it's ready to use straight out of the box. Um, they're quite inexpensive. The one that I showed at the top right here, which uses light, that's a rev uh, distance sensor, which uses light. That one is about $20, so not too expensive in comparison to the odometers or encoders. Uh, and as I said, they're quite adaptable, so they can be used to navigate around uh, any unpredictable obstacles. So here's a summary of all the different types of navigation uh, I've talked about. So encoders allow precise speed, acceleration, and distance control with any type of motor and can be used in many different types of situations, not just uh, robot motion on the field. Uh, odometers allow position reading and position control and converts the field into an intuitive coordinate grid and allows for all sorts of motion on that coordinate grid. Uh, and lastly, the distance sensor returns distance to different objects uh, and in conjunction with either odometers or encoders, uh, you have a very strong form of navigation right there. But ultimately, it's up to your team to decide the nature of the season's challenge uh, and which form of navigation is the most applicable and which one would require the least effort and the most payback uh, to incorporate with your robot. So uh, we really hope this helps. Thanks so much for watching. And as Team 5773 Inc. and Metal likes to say, innovate, implement, and inspire. See you guys later.